been with the American Cancer Society? Just over a year now. Okay. And what is your role? I am the program manager for Mission Delivery, and my territory is Metro Atlanta and North Georgia. Okay. All right. And we're going to get more into exactly what the American Cancer Society does for us locally uh, and kind of in our region, things that you may not even know. All right. And uh, so introduce yourself. I'm Dana Heil. It's great to be here cooking with you today. Awesome. We're excited. Uh, we've got some recipes hidden under here, what we call the uh, blanket, the beach towel of deceit. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to do now is reveal the ingredients okay. and give you a shot at figuring out what we're actually cooking. Great. Let's do it. Are you ready? It. All right. Here we go. Wow. I see some really healthy stuff here. Yep. Um, oh, asparagus, my favorite. Great. Awesome. Looks like a salad, maybe? Basically, yeah. And, ooh, salmon filet. Great. So, some fish and salad? Yep, yep. So, we've got three different recipes. The first one is, and the dogs are going crazy. They're excited about the recipes <laughs> as well. You can <laughs> probably hear them they, in the they background. Like asparagus they too. love asparagus. Uh, so, we've got brown sugar glazed salmon. Oh, we have a couscous tab uh, tabbouleh, which is like parsley and mm -hmm. mint and a bunch of fresh vegetables. Uh, and then we've got asparagus that's roasted in olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Wow, that sounds wonderful. So hopefully all of these ingredients are, are all healthy. It looks, you know, nice and colorful. That's one of the things they say to do is eat your colors. That's exactly right. Eat the so, rainbow. Right, exactly. So since we're working with the American Cancer Society today, we're going to eat healthy. And the first thing we're going to do when we come back is get our brown sugar glaze ready for the salmon. Great. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's All do it. All right. Let's get started. All right. So we're going to start with the salmon. Okay. And to do that, we're going to make the glaze. Okay. The glaze will we'll put everything in here in the saucepan, put it on the stove and let it simmer so that it reduces a little bit, makes it a little thicker. Because I found a lot of recipes say to make a glaze and just immediately pour it over your salmon, but it just kind of washes over right. the top and not, not a lot of it stays on. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is when I make my glaze, I'll reduce it so it becomes almost syrupy and it'll stick to the fish a lot better. Great. So that adds a lot of flavor. Yeah, exactly. So. What we're going to do is start with two tablespoons of olive oil. So if you'll grab the tablespoon and add a couple of those in there. We're also going to do a quarter cup of brown sugar. So I will start on that. There's our quarter cup. Two tablespoons? Yes, ma'am. Now there are various... Uh, versions of, of this glaze. Some of them will throw in some honey. Uh, some of them will actually throw in um, bourbon and you cook the alcohol out so you're not, you know, getting drunk off of the glaze <laughs> and eating salmon. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it adds a, a whole nother level of flavor. And what's cool about a glaze is you're using really, really strong ingredients, but you're not you know, ingesting all of those ingredients. You're just right. using it for a little bit of flavor. We're gonna add a quarter cup of soy sauce. And you can't go wrong with these ingredients. You can't, I mean, you know, and you can change it up. <clears throat> Our actual recipe here, I'm gonna put everything in that is on the recipe, and then I'm actually gonna add a couple more ingredients that oh, I have used in the past that, I, that have worked well for me. So well, that's what we're, cooking's we're, about. Exactly, we're experimenting. All right, so we need uh, three cloves of garlic. Ah, smart. So, exactly, much easier. So a half a teaspoon mm -hmm. is a clove, so we'll need three half teaspoons. <clears throat> Again, if you like it a little more garlicky. Exactly, just add a little more. That's awesome. And then if you will, 
we're gonna cut that and we're gonna juice one lemon into the, uh, the saucepan. It's gonna need a little bit of salt. Yummy, yummy. I'll do a little pepper. Great. It already then, smells wonderful. Oh man, it's awesome. Did you see that? Yeah, that garlic and that brown sugar. Oh my gosh. All right, so now the two ingredients that we're going to put in that aren't necessarily on the recipe but work great. You can use, I'm using ground ginger. You can use fresh grated ginger in here. I've done that before. Mm -hmm. So I'm not necessarily gonna measure. I'm just gonna pour a bunch right. in there. Again, hard to go wrong. Exactly. And then we've got ground mustard. Ah. This adds just a little bit more flavor. So that's our glaze. Um, I'm gonna mix this up and put it on the stove. We're gonna let it simmer and, and work its way down. Um, now, while that is preparing, uh, one of the concepts that we're doing here is called mise en place. Mm -hmm. So we've got our glaze ready. We're going to prepare our vegetables for the tabbouleh, and we're also going to prepare to cook the asparagus. So mise en place means getting everything together, everything in its place, uh, so that we can actually cook everything at the same time, and it should come out relatively at the same time. So everything's hot when you're ready to eat. Perfect. Sounds like a great recipe for a busy weeknight. Absolutely. And it doesn't take long. Uh, you get home from work, throw this mm -hmm. all together, and you got a great meal. A healthy meal. Exactly. That's what it's all about. So when we come back, we're going to uh, prepare the vegetables for the tabbouleh. We'll be right back. One of my favorite things to do Use a knife. Mine too. Actually, I really like the peeler. And then sometimes I like using it to cut vegetables. <laughs> Let's I cut some vegetables. I won't then. say what I do with it the rest <laughs> of the time. All right, I'm going to cut up this onion. Uh, we're only going to need about two tablespoons of finely chopped onion, but. Uh, does it matter if you use the red or the white onion? Or? It calls for red, okay. this particular recipe, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, some people like a little bit of a sweeter onion, so maybe mm -hmm. a Vidalia. So, you know, it's up to you. Now, while I'm doing this, why don't you talk to us about uh, the American Cancer Society and, and maybe some of the things that people already know about the American Cancer Society and then some things they might not know. Sure. Um, we are in every community and we are here in Douglasville. We mm -hmm. provide a lot of different services and programs for folks here in Douglas County. Uh, one of our newer programs is Road to Recovery. This provides free transportation to patients trying to get to their cancer treatments. So you know when you've got cancer, if you ha are getting chemotherapy, that could be once a week for months. Right. Or if you're getting radiation treatment, that could be every day for weeks. So it can be very difficult to find a way to get to your appointments. Right. Um, this could mean you don't have a car. This could mean that you are too ill to drive. Right. Or it could be that you don't want to ask your family member to take off work every single day to drive you to an appointment. So that's where we come in. If you call our 800 number, 1-800-227-2345, and let our counselors know that you need a ride, we will find a way to get you to treatment. One of the ways that we do that is through our volunteer driver program. So we have volunteers that will pick you up from your house and take you to your appointment. Mm -hmm. This is a great, rewarding volunteer experience and we really need more volunteers, especially in this county because right. we have a great, uh, we see a lot of need. You've got a great hospital here. Mm -hmm. um, several great treatment centers so volunteering for this program is really simple you can do it on your own time it's very flexible you use your own car um, we have a website that you can log in and see what rides are available okay. chances are that somebody from your neighborhood or close to you is looking for a ride mm -hmm. and so we match you up and it's again a very rewarding experience 
our drivers, our volunteer drivers, really become bonded to the patients that they drive. They develop a really special relationship. And it's great for the patients as well. Right. Um, it's you know a, another warm touch mm -hmm. while they're going through what's really a terrible disease. Right. Um, again, if that's something that people are interested in volunteering, you can call our 800 number or visit our website at cancer.org and sign up uh, to be a volunteer. That's awesome. I, yeah, I'd never heard of that uh, until you had told me about it, and uh, that's that's a I, it's something that I had never even thought about. Sure. You know that people would need rides to their treatments. Transportation is one of the biggest barriers to any healthcare treatment. It's estimated that about 3.6 million appointments are missed every year because people don't have a ri ride there or a way to get there. So again, this is a great opportunity for people to become involved with their community by volunteering to drive a cancer patient to treatment. That's awesome. And they can go to the website, like you said, go and, to the and website. Uh, sign up. It's a great way to get involved with the local community uh, and Absolutely. help your neighbor, essentially. Very, and very flexible. Um, uh -huh. We ask that you do two rides a month. Uh -huh. So if you have a job where you've got a morning off or a day off or an afternoon free, mm -hmm. you can take a ride. Again, it's maybe an hour commitment. That's awesome. You do, uh, we do require that you pass a background check, that you have a clean driving record, and that you have a reliable automobile to drive. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if you're between the ages of 18 and 85, um, <laughs> you're in. You're in. Now, you guys uh, are a huge organization. Yes. Um, and you do tons and tons of different things. Um, some that, that I read about that, that I, ha I did not know. Mm -hmm. um, that takes a lot of money. Yes. How do you guys actually fund your, your programs? We have a lot of different fund fundraising um, opportunities. Relay for Life uh, is big here in Douglas mm, County. Yeah. That's a great way to get a team, to raise money, to, the event is wonderful. It's a great way to come out and feel the spirit of healing and hope and honoring those who have fought this disease, um, remembering those who have lost. Um, another big event that we've got coming up this month in October okay. is our um, Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. Mm -hmm. We've got a 5K walk uh, that's at SunTrust Park. And then in November, we've got a 5K race that will be on KSU's campus at the stadium there. Mm -hmm. And those are both great ways to raise money that fund not only our programs and services, but also research. We do a tremendous amount of research mm -hmm. looking for that cure for cancer. Yeah, and I, I, I know that's probably what most people think about when they hear the name American Cancer Society is the research aspect. Yes. And that's pretty costly, I would imagine. It is. And again, we continue to fund the research that we think will be the next big breakthrough for cancer treatment and eventually a cure. Uh huh. Now, there are some things that you can do that help prevent cancer, such as eating healthy like this. That's what um, it's all about. We, we know that about 20% of cancers are lifestyle related. Mm -hmm. So by eating healthy and maintaining healthy weight, you're really going a long way to preventing some of those cancers like colon cancer. Right. Now, uh, while you were talking, I did chop up the onion. And it smells uh, wonderful. Yeah, and we've got all these fresh ingredients. I also chopped up some Italian flat leaf parsley, about two tablespoons. And then the mint that goes in here actually came out of my garden. Wow. I cut it this morning and uh, cut up about two tablespoons. That's great. So those are the things that I added. Now it's time for you to get to work. Okay. So uh, you want to start with the, sure. we're going to do half a cucumber. Half a cucumber. So we're going to chop it up into bite-sized pieces. And we'll see how your skills are. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well, hopefully I'll be able to use this peeler. Um, oh, this is a good one. Yeah, I love that thing. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get the juice of a lemon in there. We've got the juicer. Oh, let me 
big mess. You do a lot of cooking at home? I do. I um, really enjoy cooking and trying new recipes mm -hmm. uh, and using these fresh ingredients. I, I wish I had a nice big garden where I could grow some of these yeah. fresh ingredients. That is something I am working on, doing a garden in the backyard. What do you like to grow? i uh, definitely going to do a lot of tomatoes, uh, try to do cucumber, peppers, uh, may do onions and garlic. Uh, kind of all up in the air right now. Well, it's getting into the off season, yeah. so you've got time to yeah. plan. Yeah, I've got a couple dogs, as you probably know if you've watched the show, uh, and one of them likes to dig a little bit, so my the first step in the process was to put up a fence around the area that, that's going to be the garden. So that was uh, this summer, and um, so probably next year we'll, we'll start putting stuff in the ground. And do you have deer out here that you... Uh, we, we do, but I have a fence around the entire yard, so they would have to get over two fences to get to the garden. This goes in here? Yes. So hopefully they won't uh, feel like they need to do that. <laughs> And hopefully the squirrels will leave it alone as well. I'm going to get us a trash bowl. So we can get some stuff out of the way. Is this the right size or for tubula? Uh, that do you, that do you looks need great. Smaller? That's, that looks great. Nice bite sized pieces. Doing fantastic. Now the couscous that's going in here, we're going to be using uh, the pearl couscous. And once we're ready to cook, we will saute this in a pan for about one or two minutes in some olive oil. And then we add chicken stock and it'll absorb that chicken stock over about five or six minutes. And you can and just buy that at, at your local grocery store, Exactly, right? exactly. And this is enough right here to make probably four or five uh, helpings of what we're doing because it, it only it only takes a cup and then you add two cups of you double the liquid you can do water but we're going to be doing chicken stock so you double the amount of Adds uh, another layer of flavor exactly and uh, and we got the low sodium so it's a little healthier Good. Uh, and then it, it actually makes the uh, if you add together the liquid amount and the uh, the couscous amount that's how many cups that you'll get out of it. Oh, okay. So we'll get three cups of couscous. Perfect. And I love some couscous. <laughs> Do you know what couscous is? No, tell me. A lot of people think it's uh, like a rice or a grain. Uh, it's actually pasta. Mm -hmm. So it really soaks up the liquid pretty quick. Great. All right, so we've got half of a cucumber. Now we're going to do two Roma tomatoes. Dice them? Exactly. Bite about, size? about the same size as the uh, cucumber. The cucumber, yep. So, where were you before the American Cancer Society? I worked for several different um, transportation um, companies here in Atlanta for mm -hmm. a consulting firm, for a government firm. Mm -hmm. um, transportation is my passion. Okay. I love to look at how our transportation affects our impacts our health. Mm -hmm. That can mean providing ways to have bike lanes so that we have that right. active transportation. Mm -hmm. Sidewalks so people can get out and walk and run. Um, you don't think about how those types of infrastructure problems really do contribute to our right. health. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to uh have more ways to get around and, and not just adding roads. Correct. It's, it's about options. Yeah, that's not going to fix the problem. You can't build your way out of congestion. <laughs> no. <laughs> even though we try. Yes, we do. I can tell that you do cooking. <laughs> you can always tell by the knife skills. <laughs> and I feel like mine aren't, aren't super great. Uh, they're fantastic. This is a nice sharp knife. So yeah, that, that always helps. One of the things my dad taught me was that uh, you will, you're more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife. Absolutely. Because you're, you're want, you, you try to push down on it mm -hmm. and it winds up slipping off. And you sharpen them cut yourself? A finger. Yes. That's, a, that's an art. Yeah. And I actually sharpened that one just the other day, so hopefully it'll yep. hold up for us. 
So we're almost done adding all of the ingredients for the taboule. Uh, the other thing that we have to work on is the asparagus. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the ends off. We're gonna huh? put them in a roasting pan, add some olive oil, some balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper, and then they just roast in the oven. It's that easy. It's that easy. Yep. So when we come back, we'll throw together the asparagus and then we'll be able to start cooking everything. We'll glaze the salmon, we will get the couscous ready, and it's all gonna cook at the same time. Terrific. We'll be right back. Asparagus. You said you liked asparagus, right? I love asparagus. Great. I love it too. It's not that expensive. It's easy to cook. It makes your pee smell funny, but you know, whatever. <laughs> it's a downside to having yeah, something really healthy. You know, but it's worth it. It's so good. All right, so we're going to snap the ends off here, get this ready, and we can throw them into the roasting pan. It's actually pretty easy to grow, too. Is it? Yeah, you can plant some of this in your garden. I'll have to think about that when I do my garden. Because we, we eat a lot of it. Well, it's easy to prepare, right? You just mm -hmm. snap it off, don't even need your fancy knife. Nope. This is something the kids can do, too. Yeah. Get them involved Start with the Start those healthy habits early. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil on there. And then a little balsamic goes a long way. So I'm just gonna do probably the equivalent of half a tablespoon. Uh, and then we're gonna sprinkle some salt in there if you wanna take care of that. And a little bit of pepper. Yes, and I'll do the dirty work. All right. So you <laughs> That's just the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> you just move that around to coat the whole thing, and I like to lay it out in a flat layer. That way, it cooks evenly. So that is prepared and ready to go. Oh, it's so fast and easy. Easy. I mean, the kids could probably mm -hmm. do the entire thing. They would like to get their hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, that looks great. All right, so that's ready. We can slide that over to that side if you want. The next thing we're going to do is actually glaze the salmon. I've got it right here behind us. And the glaze is just finishing up. And before we use the glaze, we're gonna salt and pepper the, uh, the salmon. And you do skin side up. Well, I'll tell you, I learned something the other day. Uh, I, I use two pans to do the salmon. Okay. Because I like to broil the salmon. And sometimes when you broil, mm -hmm. you get a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. With the glaze, it's got a lot of sugar. So what I do is I start skin side up uh, with it glazed on the top, cook it for about five minutes under the broiler, take it out, swap it to another pan, a clean pan with ah, fresh parchment paper on it. Great. With the skin side down, glaze the rest of it, and then put it back in the oven for about four or five minutes. Perfect. Keeps it from smoking and burning the sugar that's, that's in the glaze. So that seems to help a lot. All right, so we can salt and pepper both sides. Flip that over. Do you like any particular kind of salmon or just whatever's on sale that week? Kind of whatever's on sale. Um, I tend to go with uh, the ones that look the best. Yes. I mean, they look the freshest. So, there we go. I'm going to turn it back over and we can glaze these. All right. 
I am going to let you paint these. Uh, here's the glaze and the paintbrush. I'm gonna go back here, turn the oven on to broil on high. Ooh, that looks great. Look at all that good garlic. Yeah. So what's gonna happen is we will put this in the oven under the broiler. Underneath the salmon, we're going to put the asparagus. So the asparagus is not getting that direct heat from the broiler. It's gonna bake. Uh, the salmon will cook about 10 minutes. The, uh, the asparagus will take a little bit longer than that. And while we're doing all that, on top of the stove, we're going to prepare our couscous. Great. And everything should come out at about the same time. We'll add the couscous to our lovely vegetables. And then we'll be ready to eat. Terrific. All right. So what do you think? It looks great. Look at that. I mean, you've got all this healthy, fresh stuff, and I know it's going to be delicious. Can't lots wait to taste colors, it. Lots of colors, lots of colors, and uh, it smells great. So like you said, fresh ingredients uh, should be pretty healthy. So what do you want to try first? I'd like to try the salmon first. Go for it. That nice glaze. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. It's just the right amount of glaze. You can mm -hmm. still taste that salmon flavor. It's wonderful. Yep. Sweet mm -hmm. and salmon just go together. Perfect. Peas and carrots. All right, what next? I, I like the asparagus. Again, perfect. Yep. Perfectly cooked, crisp, tender. It's wonderful. A uh, subtle taste of the salt, pepper, oil, and mm -hmm. balsamic vinegar. And last but not least, Mm. Delicious, really fresh tasting. Mm -hmm. With your fresh mint and the parsley and the lemon, that's really a great meal. And Absolutely. I think very kid friendly. I yeah. mean, yeah. especially once you tell them that it's pasta, that it's really just like little spaghetti. Exactly. Um, they're gonna love that. They're the, they're the holes in the SpaghettiOs. That's what they do with them, you know? See, I what mean, kid wouldn't eat that? I would be willing to lie to my child. <laughs> <laughs> get them to eat that. Perfect. So a great meal. We got the whole thing ready to go. Not hard to do. I mean, you could really do this after work. Sure. It this doesn't came take together long. so quickly. Mm, especially if you have great help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. And for our viewers, if uh, they want to get in touch with the American Cancer mm -hmm. Society or get any more information, where can they sure. go? Sure. They can go to our website, cancer.org. Call our 800 number, 800-227-2345, okay. and that will get you connected to volunteer opportunities. Again, we would love to have some volunteers for our Road to Recovery program, um, and it will also tell you more details about some of our great fundraisers we've got coming up this month. The 5K Walk mm -hmm. at SunTrust um, Park for Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, mm -hmm. and then a 5K Run at uh, Kennesaw State University. Perfect. Great way to get involved. The road to recovery, you only have to do it twice a month, twice right? Twice a month. Mm -hmm. So if your schedule is packed, you could probably still fit this in. Absolutely. That's what the show is all about, uh, getting involved locally here in Douglas County. This is Servings Kitchen with a Cause. We'll see you next time. Let's finish this salmon. It's delicious.